Okay, you guys, everybody knows, no lunch tomorrow, just kidding. Okay, um, in this first afternoon session, we're going to be focused on our program. I'll try to, I didn't write all the detailed information on the PowerPoint, because this is not the objective of the PowerPoint for the first thing. And also because I want to say it, I want you to hear it and discuss about it. Also, I'll be a bit slower in order to be sure that all the key points are well understood. Because um, at that point, you already have a good idea of the lifelong learning programs, a good idea of the structure, what you have to be careful to know about, the legal aspects, financial aspects, etc., etc. And now we are, by this focus, we will try to understand exactly what the program is designed to do. What are the outcomes? What are the issues to be dealt in this program? what kind of target groups we're talking about, etc., etc. So we are going to be, I prefer um, to take some time on the last session because it's a Q &A, it's a Q&A, to be sure that in this part it's very well understood. Obviously you will have the chance, and I think this is very important, to check this information in Italian, Italian language because there are versions of uh, the language available on the internet. Okay, so the objective of this uh, session, this module, is basically to learn, to have a global knowledge on the Grunvig multilateral project, globally. And more specifically, to understand the key operational objectives you understand that operational ob objectives is something practical, okay? We will go through the detail of the call, which is this, um, you remember the PDF form I showed you this morning with action programs, a program with all the detailed information, it's there. That's the place, so it's this, this, um, I'll, I'll, just for you to understand, this is guide to B. Okay? There is a, um, a document that's available on the website of the ESEA. We will see that tomorrow, how to get to the information. Okay, I will show you. Sometimes it's a bit obvious, but I, we will go to the website and we will check the, the website so you understand. So, by the call, I'm mentioning, I'm referring to the guide part 2B. And then we will, we will also, it, this is very important, the quality dimension of the program, of the project, and it's transversal, okay? Whatever you do, whatever you, the program you apply, even if it's a preparatory visit, a preparatory visit you, means that you are invited. Uh, concrete example, uh, I was invited by Synergia in June to participate to a preparatory visit for three days, which um, uh, made possible that several partners from different countries met here in Bitonto and we discuss concretely on project ideas. That's a preparatory visit. Okay, you apply and if you win you can receive 1,000 euro. Pays your plane ticket, pays the hotel, pays the good Italian food or whatever food and things like that. Even there when you write it, when you write the application form, be sure to, be, uh, to mention the quality. Because you're going to the preparatory visit, 
you will meet other companies, other organizations, and you will take from there also their way to work efficiently, with quality, blah, blah, blah. And that's a key word we were mentioning at the lunch, keywords. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus in all the modules about the quality system and the quality thing and the quality. It's going to really come as often as possible. And then <coughs> to, to, uh, to end this uh, module, we'll have um, um, a concrete example, which is a, a project that will describe a bit practically what we've been talking about. OK. So on this, um, on this guide, you have, I would say, nine. It, it's obviously my way of reading it. When I tell you there is nine key points, take it, but don't take it for granted. Read it cross information and you will have a concrete idea. Your opinion and your way of looking at things are also very important. But at least with these nine key points you will understand and you understand by the guide what we are talking about. Okay? So the first one is a consortium of organization. Obviously you remember a minimum of three partners for a Grundvig multilateral project. So the, one of the key points of the Grundvig multilateral project is to gather at least three organizations of three different member states. There's no limits for the quantity of partners in a consortium for a Grundvig multilateral project. You know why? When you go to the table, Excel table, you have the possibility to put 99 partners. No limits. I would say that uh, I don't have a specific experience on that, but um, five is very good. Three is really low. Seven is starting to be a bit too much. So I can use this. So on the consortium, I would say, let's say, between five to seven. These are good numbers. I'm giving you these numbers for you to have an idea. What's a consortium? Is it 25 countries? It's possible there's 27, plus the, the other that are eligible. Uh, our work on the multilateral with 12 went very well. But I think five to seven is the, the right number. OK, the other key point is a pool of knowledge and experience. A pool means a kind of, um, kind of a, 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 okay, attraction of things. Okay? I'm attracting to me, to my consortium, a pool, a quantity of knowledge and experience, which means that I've consulted my partners and I know what they are capable of doing. We will, we will look at that when we uh, go to the definition of the project. You just don't go to Google and uh, find some partners. Try to be efficient. It's a bit obvious what I'm saying. Obviously, sometimes there is a deadline limit and someone you need a partner at the last minute. And it happened, but OK. Tangible outcomes, a handbook, a handbook is concrete, not tangible outcome. Uh, uh, we will write a set of rules, a set of recommendations, completely empty. Handbook, for example, if it's a, um, if it's a um, training method, The training method is very concrete. Is it? How do you demonstrate how, how physically you, you... Okay, I know a training method. 
Um, the Samoan circle. How can I demonstrate? It's a, it's a method. Handbooks, videos, portfolio, concrete things, and how to. How do you organize a learning session with the Samoan circle method? Okay? So it's very it's, it's, it's easy to write tangible outcomes. Sometimes when you think about it, it's not easy to make it happen, okay? Quality of the provision. Uh, the provision with this European language is the bunch of information, the content, okay? Everything that you can, everything that you can put together to explain something is a provision. It's a global idea. And it's a keyword also. So it includes the method, the contents of learning, the source of learning, the learner point of view, the setting of the learning, all, the, all this material, the policies, everything. The European added value. This is a key point. And it means basically that what you are going to design wherever you are in Italy have a very um, strong advantage to be used or to be shared with another country or with other countries in Europe. I had an interesting conversation on the, on the break and um, I was asked, uh, well, well why should I, how, where should I start with my project idea? Should I look in Europe? Should I? And I suggested to start looking at your own backyard. What's going on? First step. Oh, there is a problem here. Let's see if this problem is the same or exists in another European country. Or even better, in other European countries. Second step. Third step, is there a solution to that problem? Maybe uh, they find something in Finland and it can solve the problem that I have in, my, in my, my place and the other place that I found out. So why don't they use this solution? What, what's, what's the obstacle? If you find a solution out there, well, you can, and you, you, you verify that no countries are using this solution, you can set a project to tackle this, this nonsense. Come on, if they, are, uh, they have the keys in Finland, what, what don't we use it? If you don't find a solution of this problem, hmm, even better, then you can innovate and bring the solution to everybody. Okay? That is European added value. Among all things, cultural diversity is very important to consider when you design a project. Even if you have the problem, the same problem in another country, what if this other country can't just take what you are going to develop in their country because of cultural barrier uh, obstacles? So you have to consider this too. But we will go deeper on the European added value. And this criteria is very important because it's one of the criteria they use to evaluate your proposal. All right. Pilot testing. I know this method uh, I can use to help uh, people to find a job. I have it here. Believe me, it's fantastic. But I never tried it, so I don't know if it works. It's a bit obvious, right? Whatever you do, if you create something, you have to put it in practice, and you have to consider that in your project. Put it in practice, then you will have feedback, you will have performances, you will have reports, you will have a lot of answers to the, to the let's say, to the value of what you're doing. Okay? Well, if it's something that already uh, exists, and it's uh, uh, something that you want to uh, multiply. Obviously, 
even if it's a, a key point, you might, you might say, well, it's already proven, it works. It's not proven. It works the way they did it, the place they did it, with the people they did it. You don't know if it works with uh, other situations. So don't just jump on, oh, it exists. So, no, don't jump. Be there and study the situation to be sure that you will have this uh, considered. Uh, <clears throat> strategic areas, areas. Well, if you, if you apply this here, something different than uh, aging people and learning pathway, Hmm, trouble, trouble. You must abide, if you have a project idea that doesn't match at all these two strat strategic uh, priorities this year, find another program. There are so many. I don't believe it's possible you can't find a program for your idea. I think it's really covered, okay? We are, we are in, in, in GMP, we are at the DG, Education, Culture, Audiovisual. But there are other Directorate General. Social Affairs, Cooperation, Europaid, whatever, okay? So be sure that you're in these highways. Teaching products. But of course, we want to develop things that we will be able to use for adults to find a job, for adults to find a, a way of improving their competences. So, well, if you do a project without any teaching content, it's possible, but somehow, even if it's craft, even if it's cooking, you have beautiful projects on cooking. But because cooking is a way of non-formal non way of learning, okay? So I don't, I don't know if it's a bit obvious for you, but this is important. Um, and here, you know, what's the difference between the European added value and the European dimension of adult uh, learning is uh, something to do a bit with the policies. Okay, the European added value is, okay, it's justified that what you're doing here is useful for other countries. And here, the European dimension is more the so-called provision. Okay, your project will bring a lot of things that can be uh, used as a recommendation and policy and trends, so all countries will follow. Well, if, 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 uh, if, it, if it's possible, because then you have the politics, depending on the government, you know, try to do something with England right now, a bit difficult. Any question at this point? Any doubt? Something maybe I uh, didn't explain well, clearly, no? Okay. On, on this part, as I mentioned this morning, you must remember, and if you, if you don't, I'm remembering you. You have this global objectives, aim, framework for all these years. And then every year you have some strategic, obviously why? It's very easy to understand. After, in 2008, the, the context was different. After one year, things are different, things change, okay? And, and so on. 
The more you go through the program, the more things are done during the program. So if a lot of things are done, then the strategy has to pinpoint what have not been done. It's, it's kind of intuitive. So, um, let's say that we have uh, four major uh, strategy within this, this uh, all years, uh, all, all, all time program. First, improving the content and delivery. So, I'm going, going to go through this so you have an idea about what is the meaning of the content and the delivery. Two, maybe three, better. Three things. First, the, um, you know, the production, the testing, the comparative studies of uh, a method that you're going to use or you're going to develop. So, you want to produce the material to improve, let's say that you want to improve, uh, to, to tackle the skills of uh, tourism, in tourism, okay? So you will address the tourism competences. Some are basics, but some are um, obvious, language, communication, etc. Um, soft skills, and then within this production and uh, testing and comparative studies of the method, you will build a curricula, meaning a set, a set of competencies that these people in the tourism activity must acquire to be performant, to find a job, to, to be able to improve their, um, their, um, their life by um, progressing in their career, okay? The second point of this improving the content of delivery is what they, what's called the Grundvig Initial Service Training, IST. This is basically a training somewhere in some country, okay? Grundvig IST, Initial... Um, oh, I forgot now. I have a white thing. Uh, initial ser uh, service training. So in-service training means, um, well, in-service you can, you can um, compare to training in a company. Okay? So you are acquiring competences, you are acquiring knowledge, you are acquiring a lot of um, learning by practicing a job as a trainee. Okay, so that's the meaning of uh, IST. Also, people who, who does in-service training obviously get more employable. Okay, if you don't have a lot of experience in cooking and you spend three months somewhere cooking, you better have, uh, you will improve and you will find a job in cooking uh, systems, uh, companies. <clears throat> the third point in improving the content is uh, initiatives that will um, bring uh, innovation to initial, initial training, okay? People who want, for example, to uh, change job or to improve a competence or to change career, okay? They will start training in this field or in this activity. So these are the three points. Okay, I put it back here. Curricula. Training and um, <clears throat> how can I translate that? Well, innovation on initial training. Okay. Content and delivery. Then <clears throat> another, uh, the second big package of uh, the call 
is the improving at the system or policy level. System, system of education, policy, um, rules that you have to follow. In that, in that uh, part, so you have, uh, I'll put it here. Well, first of all, you have, for example, uh, comparative studies. You know, for example, that in Scandinavia, the education system is working very well, very, very well. They have a very good uh, and strong system of education. Finland is often used as an example. But then you have this situation of the cultural field values that are different. So when you think about uh, sharing things, the European added value, you think about some obstacles you will find. I mean, for a Latino to think as a Finnish, hmm, there are some differences there. Um, <clears throat> you have another one. So this is comparative studies. Um, then there is another point in this package that is uh, basically indicators, okay? When you, uh, when you want to improve your systems, whatever the field in Europe, you need to use valuable and, and concrete indicators to be used in databases that will help you to understand and to have a critical analysis of the situation to improve the situation. So another uh, part, um, topic, objective, activity that you can think for your project is these indicators and data analysis. When I was in Turin with this group of uh, consultants, experts, whatever, we, we, one of the things that we've been debating is data mining how to collect information and how to organize this information to help um, the competent bodies to design rules, policies, solutions for good education, adult education. How to, should, should we use uh, the system they use, for example, in Singapore, very efficient data mining, you know? There is a big uh, comparative study between the education system in Europe and the education system in, in the States. I mean, two different worlds. Sorry. Scusato. Scusa. So, this comparative study was, it was something that you, would, you, you could use for a Grundvig uh, multilateral um, project. Um, Money. When you think about policy, you think about public money, you think about maybe eventually addressing the situation of funding programs, funding things. So you can eventually consider, it's one part of this package, consider uh, creating, developing, or disseminating a system of funding for projects. We've been talking about crowdfunding this morning, I remember, with someone, for example, etc. Um, another, another point in this uh, policy system is to create somehow activities that will raise awareness, campaigns, citizen panels. I'm working in a project right now under the Europe for Citizens, that we, we will bring some young people from every country in Europe, actually for the 47 countries from the Council of Europe. And this, these guys are going to, in groups, to travel in Europe, in each capital, to gather recommendations, to be uh, able to write a strategic recommendation on 
a European citizen sense of belonging for the European Commission. Okay? This is not under this uh, Grundvig multilateral project, but raising awareness is that. You get people uh, to, be, to know what's going on and what they can do. Uh, everybody knows, oh, if we wake up, we, some of you have kids, family, things, but Europe, well, after that, I have things to do, but actually we are building the things. So democracy, we have to vote. Human rights, all these things are building Europe. So you want an education also, an adult education also. Okay? So that's the, the force, I'll call that uh, awareness, raising. So you're starting to have the topics, operational objectives of the program that can match or not your project ideas. Okay? If I want to build, if I want to work on a comparative study between the uh, education system in Singapore and Europe, uh, I can eventually choose this program, GMP, because this specific objective is included in this project, okay? Okay, the third one is improving the accessibility. All right, this one is very rich because a lot of people have a difficulty to access uh, uh, education or just don't want to. You know, uh, one of the first points you want to when you're talking about accessibility is stimulate. Okay? I don't have this uh, problem because I'm learning all the time. Either I'm reading a book, I'm watching a video on YouTube on, uh, I don't know, on the the exoskeleton of insects, amazing world. So I'm a learner by, by birth. But a lot of people, um, well, they, they, they are bothered, they, they're bored, they, they don't know what to do exactly. It's not easy to, to, to be a learner. There's so many interesting to do, you know, play games, all that stuff, I don't know. It's okay, but it doesn't help really to put some, some cohesion in, 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 in adult uh, uh, life. We, uh, we, uh, when we are a teacher or practitioner, we always think about kids, but adults also need to. So you have this um, stimulation thing. I don't know, you can create a method to stimulate adult education. I don't have uh, examples right now, but uh, sometimes money works very well. <laughs> Go to the course and you will receive money, um, some kind of a training, paid training. Yeah, a lot of people there, but it's okay. Um, so the stimulation, uh, you, would, you would say that it will address people reluctant to, 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 to learn, okay? Uh, to, to be more specific on the guide. Um, the second point is to tackle the situation within the formal sector. You know, the structured formal means uh, secondary schools, higher education, all these frameworks that are, you know. So you will, you will uh, create a um, um, project idea developing this lifelong learning dimension within. So they will have their formal way of, you know, formal lessons, formal whatever. And they will have also addressing adults, this non-formal, informal education. Okay, so you will, 
you can build a project that will um, be interesting for a university, for example, to build uh, what we call in France, for example, cours du soir, the, the you know after work courses, for example. <clears throat> Another one is um, this exactly what I've I meant here. N F E L. Maybe this is something for me. I'm not, I'm not sure everybody uses it, but it's non-formal, informal learning. Okay? Non-formal and informal learning. You go to a museum, see, uh, you go to the Hermitage, informal learning. You will see beautiful things, you will learn about things, but it's informal. You can stop, have a coffee, chat with the guy, you know, no problem. <clears throat> Non-formal is a bit more structured. You have a group, you have a setting, you have a content, you have a source of learning, you organize. But it's not structured, okay? It's not really... Uh... For example, uh, 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 this, uh, this, this uh, method we are going to use, someone circle, we are organizing group, there is a procedure, there is a spokesperson, but it's not really structured in a way that, like in school or, okay? You, f you understand this non-formal, informal? Um, so, concretely, you will, in this, uh, in this part, you will, you will create practical applications and testing methods. Everything you create, you have to test and you have to evaluate. Um, <clears throat> and um, um, practical application and testing methods for valuing knowledge and competences acquired through non-formal and informal learning. So whatever, whatever you want people to learn from non-formal, informal le uh, methods can be brought here. Okay? Mm, how, how can I, maybe I summarize it here. You see that? No. I'm going to call it uh, learning centers. <laughs> Another uh, practical thing that you can bring to this kind of framework project is learning centers. Basically, it means promoting the, the development of, um, uh, of multi-purpose learning centers and also networks of uh, learning centers. Okay? So you build, what do you build? You build um, facilities, you know, concrete facilities that can be used to bring this learning content to people. Okay? So they, in, in the guide, it's called more specifically uh, multi-purpose learning center. You have a very good example in, in the state, for example. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dave Eger. It's a wonderful person you, you want to meet, obviously, on the internet, Wikipedia and all that stuff. Um, he decided to, he understood that um, a lot of uh, kids from social uh, 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 difficulty, um, uh, how you call that uh, in English, uh, social issues, families, doesn't mean that the, these kids are not brilliant. There might be some Einstein out there, or Picasso, or Mozart, you don't know. But if they don't have access to, to this, to the training, to education, to, they, maybe they, you're losing, you know, so he created some kind of a, um, foundation and uh, based on volunteering. So a lot of uh, teachers, professors in, in arts uh, are teaching these kids creative writing, etc. Okay? So this is a kind of multi-purpose center. You have in Paris what they call the house of the artist, la maison des artistes, where artists, they, are, they don't have money, <laughs> you know artists, they very brilliant, they create everything, they, they don't know how to spend money or to manage money. So they have this house and they can there have a, um, a safe 
pace to develop their, their, um, their ideas. This is a multi-purpose center. Um, okay, another one. Uh, how can I call that? Uh, I would call that guidance, where it's easy to understand. Okay, practically it's developing innovative guidance and counseling tools and methods. Okay, <clears throat> I give you a very concrete example. I was in a conference in December in, in Portugal. Portugal is completely passioned by Europass. They speak by Europass. Europass, this, Europass, that. The Europass system, curriculum system, resume, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, how to build a resume? Europass exists because Europe wanted to create this common language, common framework, language passports, so everybody understand that's a very good thing to do. But you know these guys from the guidance uh, companies, they hate Europass. They think it's completely useless. It's not what they want. The big gap between what they build Okay, it's political because Europe is trying to use it, okay? It wants you to use it. But this program allows you to try to get out of this box and think about how you could better counsel people. On what basis? Self-assessment, assessment, assessment which, which way? So you can also apply if you have an idea in this, uh, in this field. And this is a problem. In Portugal, they even develop, and it's a first-time thing, a toolkit for Europass. Wow. Okay, so this is a major policy tendency, but try to get out of this Europass and think about uh, you, for example, the people working designers in the creative uh, labs. They don't use Europass, it's completely useless. They want a CV with pop-up image and video. They don't even want a CV, they want a video of you. They want you to see you dance or how you do things, okay? It's, it's a bit caricatural, but that's true. Um, another thing, I don't have the Juliana watch now. Um, yeah, this one is very interesting. I would say, to resume it, walk, place, based. This specific um, um, setting, workplace basic, basically promoting interaction between formal uh, learning center and non-formal informal. And, and this interconnection should be work-based. Right? You get a student in uh, comparative uh, liter literature. You put, it, put him or her in a low, low office. Low office. Comparative study, low office. But you introduce non-formal methods of learning, such as brainstorming, such as whatever the, the, the non-formal. OK? So we get out of the formal, you know, listening to this old guy about the law, and he gets to a more interactive thing and, hey, let's uh, take this case. Uh, they are doing something, else, something against whatever the population. Okay? So this is a work-based. And actually, whatever you would like to do for this call, you and, and but basically for the last two years, should be all-time work-based. So it's really practical and concrete. People are doing and participating, adult learners are participating in your project because of employability, mobility, uh, improvement of their competences. This is really practical. Okay, whatever they will do in your project, it will help them to find a work, uh, a job, or to change job, or to go from um, technical level to managerial level. Okay? Whew, it's a lot of things, huh? Now, you're getting into it. Okay, the last one. 
it's a bit uh, intuitive also. It's the uh, management of... Um, so, one, two, three, four mainstream packages in the overall program strategic priorities. And within this one, two, three, four packages, this sub strategic orientations. Everything is in the guide, so you will be able to. Okay? What I'm trying to do right now is to give you the, the, um, the definition and to connect it with concrete example. So you have a clear idea of what, what's the meaning of. Um, Okay, uh, on the management, you have, for example, um, I'll say um, the, the non-teaching, the, the non-practitioner stuff in organizations, okay? So you're talking about the people working at administrative level, at uh, accountancy level, whatever. So you will... i give you an example. I'm a pro if I'm a project manager in a company, working in training system and all that stuff, and I have no clue, really, what uh, education is all about. But I'm a very good project manager. I know how to manage. But there's a problem here. I should know a bit about the context, the learning process, all the links. And maybe I could deal with the, the management of this project on the ed education, OK? For, ex for example. Um, um, this one is tricky. I would say non-learning organization. Okay, it's basically to, to develop to develop learnings, uh, the learning dimension on in organizations that are, that are not primarily um, originally uh, um, um, directed for education. For example, a cultural association of the neighborhood uh, somewhere. They used to organize fiestas, they used to organize uh, visits to museums, they, you know, cultural activities. Okay, so you bring learning, a learning dimension, a project, for example. Well, imagine that you have a lo your local uh, cultural um, association always organize visit in museum, okay? Then bring something there to structure these visits to museum, okay? And to allow, for example, this organization to be able to, co to give competences. Okay, you can go to the museum and just look at it, you know? But sometimes you can challenge, you can create a, 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 um, a, frame, um, an, um, a setting that helps people participating in, in the museum to improve their competencies. For example, you bring with you people, visit the museum, but no Italian speaking, only English. For example, I'm trying to give you some example, but there's so many, you have the possibility to, to check on the internet also other example. We will see one in a moment. Um, also, non-learning bodies, and by bodies, um, I'm thinking about the, the world of work. For example, uh, a trade association is not oriented to adult education. They deal with conflict, they deal with uh, policy, they don't agree with the government, blah, blah, blah. So you will build, when you, you think about the management area or topic, 
of the global strategic orientation of the Grundvig multilateral project, when you hear, you can think about building or bringing an idea on bringing this learning uh, dimension in this organization that are not really directed for this kind of activity, okay? And personally, I will, um, it, it's written like that. Measures addressed to other bodies with an important role to play in the management of adult education. That's the language. Well, and then you have the labor, the chambers of commerce, chambers of craft, trade unions, you name it. There's uh, plenty of them. I would like to add something that is not there because I believe that is very important. So this, these bodies, uh, this organization I talked about, are uh, uh, called also in a lot of documents uh, the, the competent, representative, of the world of work. This is the European definition of the bodies not involved or vocationed to adult, adult learning, but should take part of uh, the system. Chambers of commerce and all that stuff. So, personally, I will add social partners as a definition, okay? Um, a social partner is basically an organization which represents employers or employees. I don't know in Italy, but in France, there is an organization called MEDEF. This organization is an association and they represent the bosses. All the managerial level of companies. MEDEF. And by the way, it's a woman who's a manager of this MEDEF. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm saying that because uh, I'm very um, interested in the Millennium Development Goals. I don't know if you're familiar with that, MDGs. Millennium Development Goals, no? From the Na United Nations. Now uh, I stopped being a practitioner and started to be a multiplier. <laughs> because I, I, one of my job is to multiply this idea. Um, we will get back to that later on because this is one thing you should use in your project to disseminate. Um, <clears throat> well, you have another one that I would like you to know, we, meaning more or less the same thing that are business communities. And the reason why I would like to add this here is because of what's called SSA. And this SSA is something very important that you, will, you should be uh, familiar with as soon as possible. Within this whole program of lifelong learning, it's skills, actually it's sectors, sectors, skills, alliance. let's say, alliances. This is not in the guide. This is my input. You should consider it, remember it, check, and get digested. Obviously, I'm putting in here because I'm, I'm expecting um, answer for, for two applications we did in August under this Sector Skill Alliance call, which was a pilot call because it's a transition between 
the old uh, lifelong learning program and the next Erasmus for All program. So the bridge is skill, sector skill alliance. Why? Maybe I mentioned it this morning. It's because it's, all, it's quite easy to understand that sectors have specificities. You know, people working in a textile sector, sector might not need some competencies that you find in the legal law sectors. For example, it's caricature, but okay. I mean, it's not because you know how to sue that you you need to you know you have different specificities in each sectors. And this is behind this. There is what what's, is being under preparation that is European skills councils initially built for adult education. If you want to work on that field, you will think about this one. So by the world of work, you understand social partners, you understand business communities linked to social, social uh, sector skills alliance under the future European skills councils. Someone could tell me what time is it? Sorry? Oh, so I'm seven minutes uh, uh, behind the schedule. Okay. Well, it's all right. Okay, to summarize what we've been looking to, basically what you are going to, to design and to to organize in your projects, will have to involve the learners. The learners are going to take part of the activities. They're not going to receive the package. They are going to work, okay? You will think, well, this is a bit obvious at all time, whatever the framework, whatever the, the, the thing you do when you are working in the VE key, vocational education training setup, you have to consider the learner needs. You're not in the formal. If you decide, if you decide to, to, to go on a master of um, international law, it's formal, you decided, you want to. If you're in the adult sector, you, you're working in some fields, it's a bit different, okay? So you have to consider what the, the learner needs are but at all times. Because remember, in this program, you're talking about adult education. Participate in the project meetings. They are part of it, okay? And they participate also in all events and actions. So for example, in your project, you have two adult learners working with you, and when you go to an event, for example, presentation of the first result of the project, one of them will do it. So he will have to have presentation skills, communication skills, articulation skills, body language skills, blah, blah, blah. Okay, for example. And eventually also uh, foreign language uh, skills. I'll go back to the quality critical input as soon as possible. Here uh, we go. Okay. Any question at this point? Something that you would like to ask me and to be cleared? No? We have now just one hour. This hour, as you can see on your timetable, time is supposed to be um, a Q&A. You don't have any questions. I catch you now, eh? All right. 
this this uh, bridge bridge it uh, project is quite interesting well let's see the uh, the slide first first of all it's a very interesting Grundvig multilateral project because it's a long-standing cooperation, just like the same uh, you we see uh, this morning. Delphi, you remember? They started back there. So, obviously, if you start for the first time an application, you don't have this long time, blah, blah, blah. But you have to, um, maybe you can, you can do something interesting. You can, you find, you find a project in the database. You connect with them. You say, hey, you know, I have this situation here in my town, in my country, and a lot of your things that you have in your project are very interesting to be used to tackle the situation. So somehow, you bring bringing to your idea what other uh, people, organization, have been doing, and you create a bridge between what have been done with what can be done. It's a start. It, it doesn't mean you have to. Okay? Uh, the Renew project, my first ever project, uh, never had any, any uh, experience before. It's a small, it was a very small project. We won for the first time. Renew. Okay. So it's not you have to, but on a multilateral level, it's more important than a small scale. Actually, you will see, they ask you in the form, if your project idea comes from a project before, put it on the, on the form. You gotta go, right? Ciao. Grazie. And it's not, this question is not on the form, just to be on the form. Come on. Whatever the documentation you take from Europe, if there's something, a question there, be sure that it's because it's important. That's my opinion. But it doesn't mean either that if your project is very good, you need to go back from a project. You understand? It depends, but it's better. Well, in my opinion. Uh -huh. So long standing. While they were working together years after years, they brought with them other partners. They're building a network, okay, which will multiply. So it's kind of a tree growing. That's a very what we are looking at here are the, the good elements to have in your project. Okay? Do you understand? They started in 2004, 8, and 10. They worked, the, the EM was intercultural communication in bureaucratic institu institutional context, sorry. Very interesting because it's intercultural. But this is just a topic. So when you look at the topic, you will understand. They, they build tools to help workers to get acquainted to the legal bureaucratic systems of the country they wanted to go to work to and to have a better integration. Big time European add value, big time European di dimension. So another good ingredient in this project. Well, this smile is because I like intercultural learning. Sorry about that. So this, when, when I was talking about this in, involving the, 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 the learners, actually the learners, they go mobile. They took adults learners from Slovakia, whatever. They put them in Netherlands in service training and vice versa. 
for the content in the context of the project. All right? So um, let's go to Bridget. You will recognize the usual suspect tabs. Well, first of all, the um, well, the main page, you know, the reason, meaning the rational. It's a very uh, well, um, very interesting project to um, to visit to understand the GMP. I'm doing something with this. Okay, because all is there. The reason, the objective, what we want, EMs. Okay. So here, well, it's interesting. to see it's difficult to see everything here but okay so basically they are addressing people vulnerable people uh, interacting with uh, the world of work okay so there were workers getting mobile in different countries of Europe and people that were um, uh, vulnerable because they didn't know how the um, law works. Well, it's quite typical, you know. You, you don't have slavery, but sometimes, and you know in Spain, for example, people working in agriculture fields, they don't even know to how to write, they're an alphabet. So you can tell, oh, you will receive 200 euros a month. And you say, oh, it's, it's much better than my country in somewhere. They won't. But actually, they're underpaid. They work, uh, I don't know, 10 hours a day, things like that. So they are vulnerable. They don't speak the language, etc., etc. So what did they do? They created an e-learning platform. Okay, meaning that people would be able to go online and take the, the, the provision, take the information of these courses in order to prepare themselves. It's kind of a toolkit, a survival kit, okay, to get prepared. So you have, um, well, they use this system that I don't know. And, um, well, they, they had uh, uh, different content, contents in order to, to the, the worker to be able to understand what to do, how to do it. Well, basically within the countries that were uh, involved in the project. Okay, so e-learning platform. And here, Grundvik courses. Uh, this is an important thing to, to stop. Because it's a strategic uh, recommendation. I've been mentioning it with my, with my list. The, um, one of the, 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 the most important thing in when you build a multilateral project is to, within the project, build ESTs. What do you call ESTs? In-service training courses. OK? So. They, they, they had what, what we can call the blended learning method. They have the online one, and you have the residential one. Residential meaning face-to-face. -face. Okay? So, this example gives you an idea about concrete things that have been done on the Grunvig multilateral project. Spend time on it, believe me. It won't help you to understand the, the um, details of the legal documents and all that stuff, but it will give you a very strong idea of the honeycomb. You remember the bees? The structure, the logic. 
Uh, I don't know exactly right now how it will be uh, brought to you. This, uh, but if you Google uh, Bridget, you will find it. Okay, what else can we, um, can we see here that I would like to mention? Well, this is very interesting. Not many projects have a glossary. Well, you can go to the uh, EACEA website and there is a glossary of uh, terms, very extended. But um, it's interesting because in this, in this uh, project, I would say that this part, the glossary, is, uh, is one of the objectives of the Grundvig multilateral project. You have to common language, common understanding of what we are talking about. It means that anybody looking at this website will understand what they are talking about because they have, let's say, an explanation. And this explanation gives a good idea of the dimension and the purpose, the rational and the outcomes and everything on the project. Okay? Now I'm very ahead of my time. Um, well, you know, this is classical. Well, Bridget is the pro project itself. The other language they were referring to, the partners, always on the website of the project. News and events, that's the disseminating part of the project. The e-learning platform is something they, they brought to the project. So this is a always available tool. This is very interesting because maybe not a lot of people didn't have the chance to participate to the IST. Um, the newsletters, gallery of pictures or co, okay, and the download button that you can bring, um, you can download the, all the documentations and all that stuff. And also, you know, the, uh, the, the contacts are important because if you, if you decide to work on some project with the common, common, let's say, common thing, either it's outcome, target group, or whatever, you can contact them and ask them some inputs. I don't know if you have any question at this point. Some specifics, maybe you're very tired, I don't know. It's a lot of information in one day. And um, I prefer, I have a very interesting, um, let's say, um, content to give to you. But uh, maybe it's not the best moment because it's quite uh, a bit technical. It's about quality. I prefer to, to give it maybe uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, because tomorrow morning we're addressing the PCM, really the project cycle management. And quality is a very important part of it. So I can develop there. So. Um, It's uh, basically done. We can, what we can do now is uh, just a review of, of what we've been learning today. Okay, it's kind of Polaroid, what, what happened. Okay, uh, what did we learn today? Lifelong learning program structure, sectorial, transversal, remember? Grun uh, Erasmus, Comenius, Erasmus, Leonardo, Grunvig, key activity one, two, three, four. Good memory. <laughs> Uh, we had an idea of the standard project life cycle within the European agency. Yeah? I got a question. Sure. Uh, I'd like to know if the application of uh, 20, uh, from, for 2013 to 2020 um, is different from the previous one. I'm sorry. Just can, do, you don't mind to, because 
use the micro? Micro. Uh, do you already know if the um, submission for uh, the 2013 uh, 2020 is uh, different from uh, the current one? 20, 2014. Not 2014, 2020 is uh, uh, different from the current one, or we don't, don't know at the moment? Well, uh, obviously, um, I, I didn't have time to... I wish the day was uh, a bit longer, so I don't know all the details, but one thing I can tell you, it's uh, the Erasmus for All will, uh, on the Leonardo and the Grundvig will uh, address, will, will have come as a framework the sector skills alliances, meaning that uh, on the next, at least for the first year of the program, on the next session, you will have to involve, actually it was a transition this year, last year to this year, to involve the world of work. You know, all the stakeholders, that's what we call stakeholders, because until now, I mean, most of all, it was all about v VET sector, you know, people from the vocational education training working together. It's a small community. Okay, 2012 application. So the natural trend is to go on sector skills alliance, but this is only intuitive. I can, I, I can give you the answer tomorrow because I have a colleague working on the next uh, program. He's going through the uh, Erasmus for All thing. But uh, I can suggest on the Director of General, uh, General of Education in Europe, in the website of, uh, you Google uh, European Commission website, you go there and you find the Director General uh, of Education. And there is a video from the commissioner of this uh, directorate explaining Erasmus for All. Okay? That's uh, the best tip I can give you now. Sorry about that. Um, what did we see? What we, did we learn also? Oh, finan financial aspects. Um, contract agreement, rules of payments. 75% maximum grant, blah, blah, blah. We learned the critical rules, the key documentation, documentation policies, uh, 1720, and so on. The Grand Vic program, the multilateral program, adult learning, non-formal, informal. Okay, basically, One of the first main objectives of the GMP and second major objective of GMP. Okay, these two first adult learning, non formal, informal are the context, and the aging population and learning pathway are the specific objective of Grunvig Multilateral Program for this year. Okay, if if I wanted to give you uh, an idea of what we've been doing today, best thing is a picture, because you must be, you know, words, words, words. Okay. Three circles, three distinct, different contexts, area. First one, you, your local context. Now we, we, we what we trying, what we, we're not trying, what, what I want to, to give you now is an idea of the process of getting to your project. So it's kind of step by step, chronological. You'll start with this, then you go to that, okay? Okay, the European context, remember? I have a problem here, 
What about other countries in Europe? Same problem? Solutions? Whatever. Once you have this uh, overlook, you look at the programs available to support your idea. If you have a project to save a very important production of a special honey in Bulgaria that is dying because young people not stay, are not staying in the villages, maybe it's not the right program. <laughs> because it's uh, involved biodiversity, involved, but some, somehow you can connect. But if your problem is a lack of competences, that, uh, for example, a big company is closing and these guys have been working there for 20 years and then they, they only know what to, they've been doing in their company, what will be with them? Okay? So you have an idea, only an idea for now, of what kind of program is more or less, is it education, is it cooperation, is it social, is it Daphne, human rights, etc. So that's the step we're doing, you know. Then when you're looking at the local context and the European context, you understand your position as a member state. You're eligible, you etc. So you will look at the policies maybe that links you to Europe, what's going on between your country and Europe. Between the European context and the European programs, you will look at the budgets. If you have a, an idea of, of a project you, will, you want to develop, once you know more or less which kind of program, well, you, you're going to start looking at, well, what kind of budget? And that's, between, that's the link between the European Commission and the European bro program. Then you have the priorities. Okay? You have the context, you have the programs, but does it fit between your member state, country, and the program? Does it fit to its priorities? Obviously, at, at each step, there must be a yes or a no. So, if it's yes, then you go on. Now, at this level, you understand that there is uh, interactions where we can mention, as interaction, we can mention, I must have this here, for example, well, the European context brings to the member state cohesion, okay, a structured cohesion, and uh, also what you intend to do with your project local to European is to disseminate, okay? All right? At this level, this is a bit out of your box, but you should know about that, which is what, what the European context brings to program is support. Okay? The guys working at the programs, they have an idea of what the trends and the, the, the situation to be solved, and they ask money to the <laughs> European Commission, which is the group of member states. And what European the Europe expect to the programs is to be efficient. Okay, we give you a seven billion uh, budget for this program, use it well. Bring good projects, make it work. So, remember that the programs are a bit the clients also. They're providing a service to the European Commission, okay? Between these two guys, you have more let's say, um, in, 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 in this sense, the European programs bring to the member states ways to be able to have capacity building. Okay, money, you have money, now you, you, bring yourself, you bring the project, you bring tools, you bring outcomes, methods, so you have a capacity building, you're capable to do something. And, um, 
In the contrary, in the other sense, from local to the program, they expect best practices. That's why uh, under the um, um, executive agency, you have two links. Actually, you have just one, which, all, which is called EVE. That is a database of all good project, good practices, approved projects. We will go through that the other, uh, tomorrow. You have a uh, European shared, uh, shared treasure. For Leonardo da Vinci, you have Adam. So you have database where you can go and check good practices. So when you design a project and it's approved, it's mandatory. You must disseminate. You must put it on the database. Okay? If you don't, you don't receive the last part of the money. Okay, you have all this. Then it means that you have the need, you bring some innovation, you take consideration of culture. In Europe, there are the same need. You have trends also in your place. Trends means uh, directions that everybody's going. Same thing in Europe, policies, trends, strategy. The European uh, the education uh, system, uh, the, uh, the director general, are, are giving you a strategy. We learn this strategy, specific objectives, okay? Um, in this part, also, you have the strategy of your member states. Have to fit. Now we're going on details. You're building your project, you have a good idea, now you, you, you're narrowing within your project to match the same things. Is the need there a need here? Is the policy here a policy there? Is a trend here a trend there? Is a strategy in European dimension a strategy also in your member state? Does it match? It means that you connect the dot. Yes, it match. At this level, you have the strategic priority we've been going through today. Organic priorities of the own programs for the whole period. Work plans, Copenhagen process, Bruges communique, okay, and, and on. Good practices, we mentioned that. At this level, you have cultural diversity to consider. You have the EU sense of belonging I've been repeating all day. Bingo, you got your project. It's very easy there. Well, that's the way I would uh, summarize what we've been um, learning today. So with all that, you should be able to engage in the process of the program tomorrow. We should have a press conference now. Imagine that you are journalists and uh, I am the one to be interviewed. So you guys are from uh, Barry Serra, La Stampa, Il Gazzettino. Gazzettino is from Turin. Did you know that? So I don't know if you have any question you would like to, to, to ask, something you would like to go deeper. I'm all yours. No? It was a long day, right? Okay, let's make a transition of one minute maximum. About <clears throat> Tomorrow you will have an activity. You will work together. But you will decide if you want to work all you guys with me or in groups. And we are going to use um, a non-formal learning method. I don't know if I put it here, no. Uh, which is uh, basically a someone circle. We will uh, organize four groups. And I will give you uh, a topic to debate about what we've been learning today. A set of five, six questions. So all the group have the same questions. Each group, have a, to start the, 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 the activity, uh, all group will decide of a spokesperson. For, for, to start, okay? At the start of the, the activity, one group, one spokesperson, one second group, one spokesperson, and all that stuff. 
the, 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 the role of the spoke person is to start debating with other four or the three spokesperson. Imagine that the question is, uh, um, did you participate, did you work on the uh, European project before? And what would, like, would you like to share? And let's say that one group have something to say. Okay, we start the activity. So the, f the first spoke person of the, the, the group will say, well, I've been working in this and that, and we've been tackling this as situation, and we've been reaching these outcomes, and the other spokesperson might ask questions to this person. How did you do that? Where did you, did you find that? Blah, blah, blah. So it's a debate. And by debating, we, we talking about what we've been learning today because of the questions. Because the questions are linked to the, what we learned today. At any time, the spokesperson has nothing more to say. He can leave and join the group. And the debate follows, hopefully. Or at any time, within the group, someone wants to say something. He touches the shoulder of the spokesperson, and they change. OK? So the, the person in the group becomes a spokesperson and starts, hey, I, I want to answer to your question. Hey, I don't agree with you. This was not like this, blah, blah, blah. OK? This is a non-formal learning method. Yes? Anyway, tomorrow you will have a, a paper explaining again, and you have the list of questions. Don't stress. You don't have to learn anything. This is a non-formal. You are not in con competition. The idea is for you to get information. You don't want to get the information. You're bored. It's, it's, about, it's up to you. you don't, it's, there's no exam here. The idea is to try to create something dynamic in order to uh, be a more, a more interesting debate. Maybe you want to tackle a specific situation that you would like to develop. Let's debate about it. You understand? So comfort zone, stretching zone, if you want. That's it. Thank you very much for this day. And um, thank you, thank you very much. Anything you, you, um, you will have uh, the contact every, anyway during the week, so anything you can, you can ask me, I'm available, okay? So I see you tomorrow in a very good shape. In the morning we will, uh, we will start with the basics of PCM, you know, some two hours of basics, nothing really, um, Transcendental.